Thank you for jumping on today's uh, Team Call Live. We are here with Alana Molstein, the creator of 2B Mindset, and she is going to tell you her story. She's going to go over the entire program, and uh, I'm just really excited for you guys to hear all about this. And just before she jumps on, just remember our Team 2B Mindset group is going to be May 14th, so you have that date in your calendar, and I will let her take it away. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, because the program will come out May 2nd, um, but it's definitely an awesome, awesome idea as coaches to do it and let yourself do it for a couple of days. Really understand it, really get familiar with it before you, you know, start necessarily jumping into coaches. So I think that's a great timeline. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Alana. And uh, thank you for being here today. We've been kicking off these calls um, primarily with me just like kind of giving a little bit of, of my background and story if you haven't heard it. Um, and if you have, I apologize, but I'll try to keep it somewhat brief. But um, I'm Alana. Um, it's really nice to see and meet you all. And um, I I have also lost 100 pounds um, and kept it off with the 2B mindset. So essentially I was, oh yay, I just got to see some of the materials. Um, but essentially I was very overweight as a kid, very food focused, very food obsessed. Um, my whole family was, we had bad metabolism, bad genes. We were all really overweight, um, big bones, whatever you want to call it. But we were also like extremely obsessed with food and everything in our lives and family dynamic revolved around the table in a food sense and and you know every trip and every vacation was always like planned around like how we would eat there um and i always loved food and lots of it and it was when i was um about four years old where i think i also started using and manipulating food as an emotional coping thing too so not only was i the kid who just got like really excited that a carnival meant funnel cake and cotton candy but i also started i think just eating mindlessly um in front of the television as a form of like comfort and stability as you know my life was getting a little more unstable um, and less predictable so uh i would just eat and eat and eat and eat like whatever i could get my hands on like jars of peanut butter cookies candy cake um just also just like large volumes of food like several orders of chinese food as a little kid um just eating you know too much of my family's uh meals and i kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger as a result um and i wasn't able to do things like my friends could do i couldn't i never learned how to ride a bike i was always too self-conscious i was too big for it um i wouldn't try out for teams or do gymnastics or do ballet or try the monkey bars just because i felt like i was so overweight and being weighed down by it, that and my insecurities and i was always too self-conscious that like people would be too focused on it if I did those things. Um, and so I didn't. And um, I kept getting bigger. My doctors actually started getting concerned as well because my blood pressure, my blood sugar levels, my triglycerides, my cholesterol were all getting higher as well. Um, even just as a little kid, I was like totally off the charts in my weight for my height and my weight for my age um, and in all the lab parameters they were finding. So at eight years old, my parents and doctors sent me to weight loss camp. Um, and it literally was like a diet camp for nine weeks in the summer. At eight years old, I went completely by myself. And um, I just got like pre-measured food. I had to work out 10 hours a day, get weighed in, measured before and after pictures, the whole deal. Um, so I could like help try to improve my health somewhat. Um, and I actually liked it. I made the most of it. I lost about 30 pounds, but I just came back the next school year and I gained it all back because my parents were not good food influencers. Um, my parents tr did every diet, always struggled with their weight. I watched my parents do Atkins and Zone and South Beach and cleanses and Pritikin and whatever book was popular at the time, the equivalent now of Whole30 and Keto and Paleo, like whatever came in, they would do it. They would try. I would watch them be on it, be off of it. Um, and the yo-yo would just go on and continue. So I didn't have a better uh, perspective or anyone to learn from. So I would just gain all my weight back every school year and then return and rely on going to camp the next summer. So I'd lose weight every summer, gain it all back and more every school year, lose weight every summer, gain it all back and more every school year. And that became my yo-yo. Uh, and I topped up my highest weight. I was 215 pounds and I was only five feet, two inches tall. I was like busting out of a size 20, like, and 
I just like at that point refused to go past it. Um, and I was, it was just, I was in a really unhealthy place. Um, but the sad thing is that I felt like my exterior was never matching my interior. And I felt like internally I was sociable and I was fun and I was vibrant and I had a personality and I, I wanted to be, you know, living my best life, but my body wasn't representing that. Um, and I was in this body that didn't feel like my own. I felt like I had to like hide in pictures and, and like avoid events and avoid, you know, looking and, and certain and being in different ways. Cause I was so weighed down by the self-consciousness of living in this body. Um, and I realized I had to take control over it. I had to do something about it. And I did have control over it. And I just had to change my mindset about it. And so at 215 pounds, like I was five feet two, um, at that point I said, enough's enough. Like I'll go to camp this summer. I'll lose as much weight as I can. But when I return, I'm going to make sure that I never gain this weight back. Like I cannot continuously do this yo-yo and feel like I'm always starting over with 40 pounds to lose. So um, I decided I came back to it went into high school. I was about 185. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to at least go on the scale one time a week to make sure that it's not going past that 185. It's not going past the 180. It's not going to the 190. So I'm not like seeing the 200s, right? Like I just, whatever I could do, I just need to make sure that I'm not gaining this weight back. But at the same time, I started developing tools that will also help me lose weight on my own. And I, again, was always turned off by diets. I saw why they didn't work. Um, and I always wanted to eat a lot of food. I've always enjoyed a lot of food. And I love being sociable and not feeling different than everyone else around me. So I had to create a better system and approach. Um, and so I started like learning, having just an open mind and trying to find anyone I could who seemed to have a healthy fit lifestyle in a more positive way and just try to emulate what they were doing. And that's when I realized, okay, I might have fat genes and a slow metabolism, but there, there is a lot of things that I'm not doing that I, that I could be. And I started realizing my friends' houses who the mom is in a better weight, the dad's in a better weight, all the siblings are in a better weight. I realized, well, they're not just naturally thin. They're not just lucky. They are actually eating very differently than we are. And their conversations about food are very different than ours are. And I started trying to pick up whatever I could and whatever strategies I can muster. And I actually started losing weight on my own for the very first time um, throughout that high school experience. And I wanted to share this with others. I want my life just kept getting better and better as I got lighter and stronger. And I just kept shedding off this physical and emotional weight that was holding me back. So I decided I wanted to become a registered dietitian and get the, you know, be considered the highest credibility in the nutrition space if I was going to be educating people on how to eat. So I uh, got my bachelor's of science degree in nutrition dietetics, my registered dietitian license, and later went on to get my master's degree in nutrition and dietetics so I could best, you know, learn this for myself and for others. Um, and when I was down 75 pounds with all my degrees, uh, UCLA hired me and UCLA gave me a hundred people to teach a weight loss seminar to. And it was a very wide demographic, very different kinds of people. I had 19 year olds to 75 year olds. I had people on their feet all day, like nurses and, and doctors and people working in the kitchen and janitors. And then I had people who have desk jobs who sit all day and everything in between people who can work out, people who can't work out, people with gluten sensitivities or allergies, um, you know, allergic to shellfish or this, that, whatever. It didn't matter. I had this huge group of people and I had to teach them all how to lose weight. Um, and within the group we had, you know, nursing women and women with their menopause and people with thyroid conditions. Like it just didn't matter. Everyone had to be in this group together and achieve a weight loss. And so I started taking my system and working it onto them and it was successful. And um, the weight loss was positive and there's like a 12 pound average weight loss in 12 weeks, but we wanted to keep improving it. Um, semester after semester. And in addition to teaching in a group setting, I got to work with each person one-on-one -on -one. and it was one-on-one -on -one where I started deep, taking a deeper dive into everything. And one-on-one -on -one we started realizing that, um, that, you know, there's more to this, that it's not just what you eat, what you don't eat. It's not just nutritional recommendations. It's how to overcome that, how to overcome that, you know, mother-in-law who's, who's giving you a jab and how to overcome that, that potluck picnic where you really like don't know what's in your food, like how are you going to eat there? And, and how can I tell people to eat chicken and asparagus when they want to go out for sushi? And I started realizing all these like internal struggles that people were having way beyond the nutritional piece. You can't really just tell people what to eat and what not to eat because that's 
that doesn't help overcome what to do when you're just really anxious and you just want to eat like crazy? Or what if you're a volume eater, or emotional eater? How do you, how do you like overcome those things? So, so you can actually keep this weight off and get to the root of the issues and start approaching food in a more manageable and sustainable way for the rest of your life um, in a healthier way. And then I would work with people who aren't volume eaters and aren't emotional eaters, but let's say they're just at a Thanksgiving meal forever or at a Super Bowl party forever and you're just around food for so long. Like, how do you approach that? So I started creating all these systems for approaching these other aspects of weight loss that no one was touching on. Because every diet says, eat this, don't eat this, but no one's touching on the emotional aspects of eating, the behaviors, the environmental aspects of eating, of like how you just set up your kitchen and how you like make it easier for you to do better in the long run. Um, and so I started creating more and more of these systems and the weight loss started getting better and better and better because of it. And I kept hearing like, people's internal but a lot of you know, I, I feel like I can't lose weight or I feel like I'm at a plateau and I realized, okay, well, well, why are you feeling that way and how can I help you address it? And so I started creating more like sayings and approaches and systems to touch on this whole other aspect of the weight loss journey that that's never been addressed and everyone benefited tremendously because of it. Um, and the average weight loss I ended up teaching at UCLA, a different group of 100 people every semester for 10 semesters. Um, and by the 10th semester, the average weight loss over doubled and became about 24 to 25 pounds. And um, I also was building up my private practice in Beverly Hills, working with clients one on one, and then also got married, had my baby, had to lose that weight postpartum with the program, and it worked. Uh, beautifully well to lose my last 25 pounds and that's when I met Beachbody and um, together with Beachbody we've been spending the past years developing it taking it to the next level adding incredible resources and tools to it testing it on hundreds of people um, and it's been more effective and better than ever and now we're launching next week so you all can do it too like nurses and and doctors and people working in the kitchen and janitors and then I had people who have desk jobs who sit all day and everything in between people who can work out people who can't work out people with gluten sensitivities or allergies um you know allergic to shellfish or this whatever it didn't matter I had this huge group of people and I had to teach them all how to lose weight um and within the group we had you know nursing women and women going through menopause and people with thyroid conditions, like it just didn't matter. Everyone had to be in this group together and achieve a weight loss. And so I started taking my system and working it onto them and it was successful. And um, the weight loss was positive and there's like a 12 pound average weight loss in 12 weeks, but we wanted to keep improving it. Um, semester after semester. And in addition to teaching in a group setting, I got to work with each person one on one. And it was one on one where I started Deep, taking a deeper dive into everything. And one-on-one, -on -one we started realizing that, um, that you know, there's more to this, that it's not just what you eat, what you don't eat. It's not just nutritional recommendations. It's how to overcome that, how to overcome that, you know, mother-in-law who's, who's giving you a jab and how to overcome that that potluck picnic where you really like don't know what's in your food, like how you're going to eat there. And, and how can I tell people to eat chicken and asparagus when they want to go out for sushi? And I started realizing all these like internal struggles that people were having way beyond the nutritional piece. You can't really just tell people what to eat and what not to eat because that, that doesn't help overcome what to do when you're just really anxious and you just want to eat like crazy. Or what if you're a volume eater or emotional eater? How do you, how do you like overcome those things? So, so you can actually keep this weight off and get to the root of the issues and start approaching food in a more manageable and sustainable way for the rest of your life um, in a healthier way. And then I would work with people who aren't volume eaters and aren't emotional eaters, but let's say they're just at a Thanksgiving meal forever or at a Super Bowl party forever and you're just around food for so long. Like, how do you approach that? So I started creating all these systems for approaching these other aspects of weight loss that no one was touching on because every diet says eat this don't eat this but no one's touching on the emotional aspects of eating the behaviors the environmental aspects of eating of like how you just set up your kitchen and how you like make it easier for you to do better in the long run um, and so I started creating more and more of these systems and the weight loss started getting better and better and better because of it and I kept hearing like, people's internal but a lot of you know, I, I feel like I can't lose weight or I feel like I'm at a plateau and I realized, okay, well, well, why are you feeling that way and how can I help you address it? And so I started creating more like sayings and approaches and systems to touch on this whole other aspect of the weight loss journey that that's never been addressed and everyone benefited tremendously because of it. Um, 
and the average weight loss, I ended up teaching at UCLA, a different group of 100 people every semester for 10 semesters. Um, and by the 10th semester, the average weight loss over doubled and became about 24 to 25 pounds. And um, I also was building up my private practice in Beverly Hills, working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, and then also got married, had my baby, had to lose that weight postpartum with the program, and it worked uh, beautifully well to lose my last 25 pounds, and that's when I met Beachbody. And um, together with Beachbody, we've been spending the past two years developing it, taking it to the next level, adding incredible resources and tools to it, testing it on hundreds of people, um, and it's been more effective and better than ever. And now we're launching next week, so you all can do it too. I just want to let you know that the team pretty much like has been focused on the launch of 80 Obsession. So we are switching gears now, obviously, to 2B Mindset. And so I really want you just to, I guess, help them to see like, okay, where do where does this fit in for them in terms of like their lifestyles and how they can take it and they can help other people with it? Because I know a lot of people are very excited about it because it's so, it's like the complete opposite of what we've been doing. It's probably the opposite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to think of two programs as opposite as these two are. Um, they are very, very, very different. Um, you know, obviously, 80 Day Obsession is like an 80 day, you know, CU specific fitness um, results um, and follow a, you know, super cut out for you uh, type of eating plan. This is um, a little, this is a lot different. Um, there is no time stamp to this because. This is, uh, as a lot of coaches say, it's more of like a course. It's more of like a really like reshaping and re-understanding the way you look at food um, in a very simple, sensible, and sustainable way. Um, it, so in a lot of ways, it's the nutrition piece of it, the physical piece of it is a lot uh, simpler in its approach um, because it's not as... as um, created for you, I guess I'd say. Um, so how, so let me just come from my perspective. Um, I, this program doesn't have containers to it because I've never even seen the containers before I met Beachbody. Um, so this is just a, a totally different approach to eating. Um, and it's, it's really, there is a structure to it. I think people are nervous, like to go from something so structured to something with no structure. Um, there's a great line that says, with, dis with discipline comes freedom. Like there has to be some structure in order to see success. The reason why we're seeing with the two mindset, people are losing 70, 80, 90, 95 plus pounds um, is because there is some structure to it, obviously. So um, it's a breakdown of 41 videos. The first videos break down the structure of the program. So, oh, thank you. So, um, you're going to learn my basic principles of the couple, like of the structure. So you do learn how to eat well, you do track success and you can keep being more and more, more successful. And then you're going to learn the flexibility of it. So while there is structure and there's enough to make sure that you are tracking success and seeing progress, everyone's different and every day in your life is going to be different and you have to learn how to eat at your aunt's potluck and you have to learn how to be able to eat at restaurants and you're going to want to go on vacations and travel and that's what the to be mindset approach is, is and like that you will actually keep living your life um, beyond a certain day and beyond whatever and you'll actually keep being able to lose weight in all these different social settings and eating circumstances with more of like an internal control and understanding as carl um the ceo Deichler, like explains it it's like the containers are more of an external control like you use these things to control your food versus the 2b mindset which is more of an internal control system like you're actually learning and understanding what you want at different meals for and, and how to design your plate so breakfast, lunch, dinner, you can do at a diner, you could do at home, you could do wherever you are and, and keep losing weight and keeping it off. Uh, really high and healthy way. So that's one of the coolest things that comes out of this is that we've had several people do the program and all see success um, and no one's really eating exactly the same day to day. And that's why, um, you know, this is something that you can really live with for the rest of your life while you keep your weight off. So um, there is structure. Like if you're coming from the 80 day obsession, you're going to be like freaked out if there's no structure. You're not going like, to, I know the mindset word tends to freak people out and think like, am I going to be meditating on a grape? No. Uh, you will, I, like you will, there is enough structure to make sure that you're successful, but enough freedom so you could find the flexibility and enjoyment in 
in, in making this weave in seamlessly into your lifestyle. Um, and we've had a lot of people do the two-beat mindset eating plan and the 80 day obsession workouts and see killer results. So if anyone on your team wanted to do round two of 80 day obsession workouts while doing the two-beat mindset eating plan, like, oh my God, you will thrive. You'll see incredible results. And as of May 2nd, as coaches, there's, um, in the coach office, there'll be an added video showing you that if you do any of the beach body workouts, shift shop, pio, hip hop abs, whatever it is, um, how you would do the two be mindset eating plan and just make any modifications if you need any um, with those workouts so that you're not following those workouts, nutrition guides you're using the two be mindset one. That is so exciting. You know, that's exactly what I was telling the team. I'm like, you know, this is like, I'm so glad you said it's a course because I really feel like this is like continued education. You know, it's like we now we know how to use the containers. Awesome. Now we are going to learn how to do something else. And that's why it's so important for all the coaches to go through this with you and your group. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, it, this is so different. Um, in so many ways and you're gonna I think you're all gonna love it I really think you're all gonna love it um in so many ways I mean we've had coaches we've had hundreds of coaches in the test group see incredible successful results um you know I, someone just said like they're doing the to be mindset eating plan but they still like putting their quinoa in a container um like it makes them feel just secure and comfortable because and they're so used to it and and in that case it's great like you can absolutely if you love the containers and you're used to using them you can use them as a compliment if you wanted to in this program. Um, but then again, this is for you if you are in a container user or if you have so many customers who never did that, don't know about it, like you never have to have that in order to do this. I love that. So in terms of when we're like talking to our friends and family and our social media, um, you know, following, who would you say that this program is, is for? And like, so when we're talking about like, who should we be talking to? Who's our audience? Right. I mean, the coaches who've done this literally just keep saying, this is for everyone. Like, who are we kidding? Um, and, and the truth is, is there's really no one who can't benefit from this. Um, because obviously, it's an extremely effective and successful weight loss program. The results are tremendous. We're seeing average weight loss of about 10 pounds a month every month consistently. So people are losing just as much weight, if not more weight, month six, seven, eight, nine, ten, than they even are month one and two. So it's super, super successful um, and effective and awesome and wonderful, enjoyable weight loss program for anyone who needs to lose five pounds, like just the last five pounds to who I was like just sitting next to a Beachbody employee who looks ridiculously good. And she's like, to be mindset. Like I just lost those last 10 that I've been battling and struggling with. So it's, it's great for that person. Um, but it's also great for people who need to lose 200 plus pounds. Um, and, and everything in between. So it's, but it's also, we've had a lot of coaches do this program who are fit, who are healthy weights um, and didn't have any weight to lose. And once they do the weight, like the to be mindset, they realize, wow, it just wildly improved the relationship with food um, and, and made them into such a happier, more freer person internally in how they look at food. Because a lot of the coaches were doing this program who didn't have any weight to lose, but they were still felt like every time they had a burger and fries, like they were cheating. Or every time they had a piece of cake, like they would have to do a double workout later to overcompensate. And like all that negativity really gets like weeded out with this program. And you start to realize like you could have cake and still live your life um, with the to be mindset and approach in just such a smarter, more sensible way. Um, and so it's really not just such an effective weight loss program. It's such a positive influence in just improving your relationship with food and your body. And then also your relationships with others, because, you know, so many people feel like they're on a diet or like they have to eat different than their family and friends, or like they're the awkward one at the table who has to do something so different than their spouse or coworkers. And this is so much more of like a seamlessly integrated into your everyday lifestyle. So you don't even feel like you're doing anything too far out, but you will still actually be eating big, satisfying meals and losing weight. So, um, it's great in that sense. It's really good for people who don't want to exercise. Um, there are a lot of people who don't want to exercise, can't exercise, have an injury, don't feel good enough in their body to want to do that, um, don't have the time, whatever it is. So it's great for people who don't want to exercise. What happens, what we consistently say, I see it in my private clients, but definitely in the test groups, is the people who don't exercise from the start are typically the ones who have become like huge 
fitness aficionados down the line once they feel super empowered in their bodies um, and just get the eating into a good place. Um, but then this is also for so many people out there who do take on the workout challenges, who do like to work out, who do continuously work out, but aren't seeing the results they want because the eating isn't there. Um, and so it's really good for those demographics. I think a lot of beach body coaches in the itself are, are going to be so successful in this because I think a lot fall into that group where, you know, you've done all the workout programs, but like, you know, just getting that eating into a right place or a consistent place where you're eating well even between workout programs um, hasn't been there and, and will begin to. So, um, and it, it's good for everyone in between. It's really, I mean, what we see, one of the most amazing results we get from this program is it's, there are so many people out there who think they can't lose weight. There are so many women out there with PCOS who've been told by doctors that they can't lose weight and then they do the choosing mindset and they do lose weight effectively. Um, there's so many women out there going through menopause um, or breastfeeding and feel like they just can't lose weight and they do the two minutes and they realize they can. So it's really just effective for men, women, people with any sort of allergy and sensitivity tolerance. It's, it works for like really kind of everyone. We are so excited. I'm hearing like these buzzwords like food freedom, you know, not having guilt around your food, um, your healthy mindset. We're calling our team group a, um, a mindful approach to nutrition. That's what we're calling our little like team group. Um, and I'm hearing enjoying food and losing weight. Um, and I also know that you're pregnant. Congratulations. I'm like almost nine months pregnant now. Wow, and seeing, seeing that chair, like from here up, like can't even tell. And I know like a lot of moms are like, okay, goals. <laughs> I'm 36 weeks now. Oh my goodness gracious. It's so awesome. So do you want to talk a little bit about maybe pregnancy while doing yeah, that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Honestly, like I, I know this sounds like so cheesy and corny, but I've had such a better pregnancy having a stronger to be mindset than even my first pregnancy. Um, and you guys will learn why. So basically, obviously, um, it's a very effective weight loss program. So as the program stands, it's not great for pregnant women because you, if you followed it to a T, you would start losing weight and we don't want anyone to do that while pregnant. It's obviously not safe. So um, there are modifications that will be coming out and be published along with the to be mindset. So if you're pregnant, you'll get all the benefits of learning how to eat better, learning how to have a healthier approach to food, a healthier mindset with food. Um, and everything else, but you're not gonna have the side effects of weight loss. Make sure that you're gaining at a healthy, not excessive weight gain, um, but of course you'd be working with your doctor to ensure that. Um, so yes, we are gonna be publishing pregnancy modifications. Um, and I'm, I mean, I think, I'm like obviously as someone pregnant and so thankful that I ate well my whole pregnancy, I'm just like, I'm so thankful because I feel like I feel so much better um, because of it. So hopefully uh, those modifications will be published so that pregnant women can start those too. It's really exciting. I'm assuming postpartum too and not feeling the stress to have to be on like a diet and like risk their, you know, milk production and stuff like that. So I know you guys will cover all of that. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of breastfeeding women do this program, a tons of breastfeeding moms. I mean, I think that's a big Beachbody audience. So we've had a lot of breastfeeding women do the program and my goodness, like they get to their pre-baby weights faster than they ever did before while maintaining a milk supply. Um, so yeah, I mean, like the program, a lot of people are asking me like, can I do this breastfeeding? Can I do this if I'm doing a super intense workout? Can I do this if I'm type two diabetic? Can I do this if I had gastric sleeve surgery? Like, you know, luckily the program is designed that well, why everyone is successful with it and we've only had successful and positive results is because it, it really is me showing you enough structure so you can be successful, but it's really up to you to take this information and put it in practice and create your best system. Um, so, you know, if you're breastfeeding and you need to eat more, we literally have a video called want more. Sure. Like you would just use that to help create, figure out what's working best for you. What isn't. So it really takes um, everyone being aware of their bodies, their conditions, and, and, and tweaking it as they see fit. And because the program is designed that way, that's why we actually see better weight losses in month two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, than you necessarily do in month one. Because month one, you're watching the videos, you're kind of getting it, you're understanding it, you're putting it into motion, and then you're figuring out what works best for you, what doesn't. And then once it clicks, it like melts off. And that's one of the biggest differentiators between this and anything else is that with the 2B mindset, the more effort you put in, the more effortless it becomes versus other programs where you might like 
it might be really easy to follow for three weeks, but then life kicks in and you can't do it anymore because it's overly restrictive and, and not enough of a seamless thing. Whereas this is like, you know, it's, it's harder in the beginning as you're understanding the concepts and you're putting them into motion, and you're doing trial and error and figuring it out, but actually it gets easier with time and more effective with time as you do. And that's why people don't only lose a ton of weight with the program, they actually keep it off. And our first test group we ran was 16 months ago. And I mean, we have people who've lost 95 plus pounds, eight, several people who lost 80 pounds, several people lost in the 70s, several people lost 60s, and they've actually kept it off uh, months and a year later. So it, for that reason. So I think that's like just a different mindset to go in with is that this is like so much more, like this is, you'll lose weight, you'll learn how to eat better, but it, it's also like forever, like you're forever just gonna have that more positive mindset in relation to food, which is why there's no like 21 day, 80 day, three week thing, because it's kind of, you. once you have the two week mindset, you're never gonna not wanna have it. And this is for life, whoops. Yeah. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm muted, I'm like, wait, I'm muted, no, I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> and it's for life, and so if, if as programs come out and coaches want to, if you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna choose to do two week mindset and do a new program launch, like you can totally do that. And I think it's just as coaches, it's giving you options. And my, I've been a coach for seven years, and I learn a lot um, from watching, you know, other people do things and go through things. And coaches, I want you to listen to this question very closely. So, Alana, you have been leading um, test groups and doing this. You said for you know since for sixteen months. Yeah. And so, from a coach perspective, leading these groups, um, what are some tools and learn things that you learned and um and just like something that you want to tell the coaches to like as a coach to maybe think about and know and do yeah well we like the success group guide we're calling it a success group guide not a challenge group guide because um this is a long-term success thing not a short-term challenge so um the success group guide we created is awesome so i really recommend you use it if you're not familiar with the program especially um but also definitely be part of my group starting may 2nd so you can see how i do it um i mean i think it's you know obviously things like you say to everyone like trust the process like you know trust the process don't be so reactive like this is someone one coach said the best line she said everyone wants microwavable solutions for crock pot problems i love that um this is kind of like similar it's like it's you know you have to trust the process you have to give it a couple of days to work and to and to figure out so um i think just you know encouraging people to stay positive to have a positive mindset really important like to just keep people encouraged really um encourage a group positivity where everyone's cheering each other on so you want to be able to like eliminate jealousy as much as possible when people are losing weight and seeing success that means everyone has better chances of seeing success because we're a makeup of our surroundings and we can all learn from each other so um you know just keeping it super positive um and also just kind of continuously reinforcing that it, it's not a race go at your own pace some of the people who lost six pounds month one lost less than other people, but then they end up losing 12 pounds the next month and 12 the next month. And then, you know, so it, it's really like everyone is going to approach this differently. Um, also, there are videos that you're going to have access to right away, but just because you watch them faster doesn't mean you're going to lose weight faster, right? Because I'm, again, providing the information for you to put in motion. So really like take this at your own pace. It's not a race. Um, encourage a lot of just positivity, um, engagement, and um, have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, that's the number one rule on this team. Like, have fun with it. Keep it loose. Keep it fun. Um, so now that was from a coach standpoint and leading these groups. Now from a registered dietitian, like Dr. Hat on, like, what are some tips that you have? Oh, them? great. I love that question. Um, yeah. But as a registered dietitian, my favorite thing that comes out of the test groups is improvements in people's health. So yes, you're going to look hotter in a bathing suit and in your workout clothes and in your selfies. But I mean, the health dynamic, like the health results we're getting and people are saying they're from their doctor visits are literally extraordinary. Um, people's blood pressures are greatly improving their cholesterol levels their blood sugar levels their digestive issues like obviously i can't make any legal claim and promise to this but i mean what we've seen in the test groups is literally extraordinary so one thing i'm 
really recommending to everyone before starting the program is get a physical, um, get a checkup, get a baseline, get your labs taken, get your weight taken, get your BMI, talk to your doctor, whatever it is, get your labs. Because when you go back to your doctor in six months or a year, your doctor is going to be hugging you so excited um, because you will see so many other health benefits come out of this program. So I'm really pushing everyone to go get a doctor's visit before starting this program. Um, and, you know, I feel like doctors will end up being our biggest referral source for you and future customers, because this really should be like the doctor recommended weight loss program because it's so healthful and smart and effective. So I would say that. So I asked them if they have any questions. Um, I feel like you've been very thorough in covering anything. Is, uh, is there anything else that you want to speak on that I haven't asked? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, we want to talk about water. Uh, I love water. I drink a lot of water. <laughs> Um, water first. Let me say water. Drink a lot of water. Um, I, I am a fan of the scale. So that's one thing that a lot of like beach body coaches are not used to hearing and saying because I think for a long time, a lot of beach body coaches have been avoiding the scale. They're telling people to avoid the scale. Um, and so I think a lot of coaches like at first are like, oh my God, but I've I've been avoiding, so I would tell people to avoid the scale. Um, so I've been trying on these coach calls to just like give a little bit more background and perspective into what that is. So you're not like so distracted um, by the scale when it comes out, which is something that like we're not really seeing as a reaction to the rest of the world, but as beach body coaches, I think there's like a big reaction to it. Um, the scale is your friend. This, you're going to love the scale. Anyone who has to lose weight is going to and do the two mindset is going to love the scale. At first you're like, I hate it. I hate the scale. I've been avoiding the scale. I mean, the truth is, is like the more we send out this message to avoid the scale, the worse our obesity epidemic is getting. Um, we talk a lot about the obesity epidemic. We talk a lot about how two thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. Like you're a minority if you're a small, like a, a healthy weight right now. I was just in a room with like 30 people this week. Um, and I was discussing health and, and these issues in America. And I was saying the stats of two thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. And I was in a room where there was like, out of 20 people, like 19 were overweight or obese. Um, and, and I'm in Los Angeles where I, I think the demographics actually supposed to be a little bit better than the rest of the country. But anyway, um, so we, we keep talking about the obesity and the overweight crisis in America. I'm on the board of the American Heart Association. We keep talking about how Heart disease is the number one killer in America. 80% is preventable with lifestyle factors, including weight loss. Um, you know, obesity is a measure of your weight. Your weight is measured on a scale. Um, nothing, the, there's a lot of research supporting, like not, no goals, um, no health goals should be like attempted if they're not measurable. Like we need to have some sort of measuring device to make sure that you're seeing progress and you're learning what works and what doesn't. So the scale is going to be a part of the program because it's going to help track your progress and help you learn what works for you, what doesn't um, in that way. And you're going to start loving it because as of now, a lot of people hate it. You, everyone hates the scale if they've been avoiding it because the longer you avoid it, the scarier it becomes, the more of a shocking number, the more of like, but in the meantime, people are avoiding doctor's visits because of it, uh, which is way more dangerous. And actually a two pound weight gain, which is something you could do literally one night with margaritas and, and pizza with friends, um, a two pound weight gain can increase a person's diabetes risk by four and a half to 9%. And um, so like, unfortunately right now we live in a society where everyone's avoiding the scale, seeing a two pound weight gain and learning how they can lose it and waiting instead to then have to prick themselves and, and be at risk of, you know, having to test their sugars constantly throughout the day and be at risk of diabetes and be at risk of heart disease and the amputations that come with it. So the scale is just a tool. It's along with like tons of tools and resources you're going to get along with the program. Um, but it is going to be something that's going to help track and monitor your success. So you are encouraged and motivated to keep wanting to eat well and to, and to learn your best system so you can continue to lose weight and also ensure that you're not gaining your weight back. So um, I could talk about this for a long time. I, I, I'll spare you. Um, but if you want, I can continue. Um, but 
with the test groups, we see like the first few days, everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe she wants me to go on the scale. And then they realize, well, it's a weight loss program to check your weight on the scale. That makes sense. And then everyone actually starts to love the scale because a lot of us are scared of food and we mask it as a fear of the scale. And what I see continuously with people is they say they're scared of the scale, but really it's coming down to real fear of food. Um, and a lot of people think like if they have a slice of pizza, well, now you might as well eat the whole box and the bucket of fries and soda. Or if you're going to have one cupcake, well, now you might as well have 10 and eat the Oreos that come with it. And everyone has like this, like very all or nothing um, approach to eating. And they think every time they eat like a slice of cake or have, or start drinking or whatever it is, that it's the end of the world. They might as well fail. They might as well wait till Monday, that whole negative cycle. Um, and it's really not the case. And actually people start to love the scale and actually love and appreciate food more because they realize actually you can have a slice of cake and still lose weight that week. Um, and it was just a slice of cake. And maybe the scale goes up 0.1 or 0.2, but there's actually a video called, Alana, hey, the scale went up, now what? And you'll learn what to do, and you'll learn just how to you know, eat really well the next couple of days, whatever it is. Like you, you learn that there's balance in life. You learn you, that there's room for a cheeseburger and fries in a weight loss journey and in a life um, without the guilt of it and without the the reactivity and drama that a lot of people put with these things. So. Um, so that's one thing that like, you know, I, I love to tell people before starting this program is like, just understand that. I mean, I, could, I have a lot of research published on this. I'm, I'm published in the Journal of Obesity for my research on like this, using the scale as um, a form of accountability, um, sustaining weight loss, um, improving weight loss, providing a positive feedback loop for um, figuring out your best system and, and, and positive reinforcement for eating well. Um, so you can look at that and I'll talk about this a lot more, but I just think like before starting this program a week out, it should be something that everyone like chills out about and realizes like the more and more we tell people avoid this thing, the worse, the worse our health has actually been getting, the more anxiety, the more fad diets, the more quick fixes, the more negativity that everyone is actually fostering with their weight in the scale. Um, and it's, it's doing more harm than, than it could be doing good. And if you've hated it for a long time, because you were going on all the time and you felt like you had to starve yourself to bring it down, you're going to be so happy and satisfied realizing you could actually eat a lot of food. You could actually be full and satisfied and be enjoying your life and that thing will go down. So if you've hated it in the past because you have this negative relationship with it, because um, you thought like you had to do extreme things to make it go down, you'll actually be so pleasantly surprised to learn that you could actually eat a lot with the two-be mindset approach and see it go down. And that's like the most exciting part. So just be open-minded, trust the process. You guys, somebody mentioned it's a trigger. So like, you know, like, well, maybe this will change your trigger. <laughs> well, if it's, been, if it's been a trigger for you in the past, um, it was because you also didn't have like a whole program teaching you how to use it in a really uh, sensible, practical, and, and, and really amazing way. Um, so it's, it's like how, you know, it's like how would a marathoner ever improve their time in their race if they didn't know their time you know so if you got it's really it's just a tool in addition to millions that you're gonna see it's not you're not defined by your number you aren't your number um and actually like three days into the program everyone is obsessed with it loves it and sees how valuable it is and everyone started the same way you're starting now with it's ludicrous we should be avoiding this thing and meanwhile like if you look at the past history of time, doctors have still needed to know your weight in order to best assess your health. Um, you know, your weight for your height, your BMI, like it does help assess your risk for certain chronic diseases like heart disease and diabetes and certain cancers that are our top killers in America that are so preventable and avoidable with different lifestyle factors a lot of the time. So we actually have a lot in our control to improve our health and our mindset um, and our long-term success and vibrancy. Um, and you, you're gonna have that control and sense of freedom with this program. So don't be scared if it's such a you know big trigger for such a long history of disordered eating. Um, you know, take in this program, see how it works first. Um, you know, a lot of people ask, is this for people with eating disorders? So I always say there's a very fine line with eating disorders because eating disorders are classically classified as psychological disorders. So the best example I can give is like a client of mine um, who has an eating disorder. You know, it started when she was a kid because her sister 
was hit by a car and passed away. And so she developed anorexia as a means of trying to get control over her hectic situation and trying to get you know attention from her parents. Real psychological disorder manifests itself in food. And so, you know, if someone comes from a place of that, they need to really be getting the psychological help they need. They need to be working with a team of professionals and psychologists and dietitians specialized in eating disorders. And maybe this program isn't appropriate for you because no general program should work for you. You should really get the catered help you need. But if you do come from a place of disordered eating because you've done so many diet programs in the past, or even just one diet program in the past that like or even you just did paleo one day and vegan the next day, which are completely conflicting and you just don't even know what to eat. So you're like, feel guilty eating all kinds of things. You will greatly benefit from this program. Even if you didn't like the scale in the past, you will actually learn to love it and that you can have so much more freedom in your approach to eating and, and life. I know for me, like I've gone down all the rabbit holes and I, and one of the things that I always say is the, the more you learn, the less you know. So I'm really excited about this because I know it can get very confusing because everything will kill you and everything is healthy. So, but there's some really great questions coming in. Do you have time for a couple questions? Uh, yeah. Okay. So people want to know since coming off the 80 obsession, we've been like really doing this beach body, beach body performance and along with Shakeology, like how, where does that kind of stuff fit into this program? Shakeology is highly integrated in the program. Um, if someone is allergic or can't have it for any reason, they could still do the 2B mindset, but it is highly encouraged, um, highly reinforced as an amazing complement to the program. Um, I love Shakeology, drink it every day. My husband, my daughter, like we're all beach barred daily sunshine. Like I totally have my RD seal of approval on all their products and love them all and use them all. Um, and within the test groups, we're also seeing like having Shakeology on a daily basis in part with the 2B mindset is super successful for everyone's results. I love it for so many reasons. Um, one, it tastes delicious and I'm all about like still like eating and enjoying all the flavors you know and love. Um, so I love that aspect obviously, but it's also very high in protein and it's also really filling and satisfying. And I'm a really big fan of being full and sad is like being full and satisfied from all your meals. Um, and like having protein at every meal. So you stay full and satisfied. So you have a better mindset and you stay full and satisfied while losing your weight. So Shakeology works as a great part of any meal. Like you can work it into breakfast, lunch, snack, or dinner on May 2nd. Again, within the coach office, there's like, will be an extra PDF showing you how to like even more like precisely how you can weave Shakeology into any part of your day. People have been doing all different kinds. Um, through the test groups, people have been making it their snack, making it part of their dinner, making part of their breakfast. I'm a big fan of it at breakfast. That's where you'll see me talk about it the most because I'm also a very big fan of having a good, consistent morning routine. Um, I really am a big believer that having a good, consistent morning routine just sets everyone up for just a better mindset, a better day as like the emails rolling in and you got to get kids to school and like all the hecticness of the morning comes in. It's good to know that you just had a really just satisfying morning routine that helps you overcome cravings and, and pitfalls with your food that might come up later on. And so I like Shakeology at breakfast because it's a very easy thing to stay consistent with. Um, because you have your monthly subscription, you have it, um, and you're good to go. It's good for traveling and everything else. So uh, yes, Shakeology is highly part of the program. I'm also a big fan of the boost. I love the digestive, the power greens, the focus energy if you're not drinking coffee. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. When it comes to the performance line, it really depends on the workout program you're doing. Um, so you'll see like, if you're doing 80 day obsession and you want to have recover, um, you know, like you can obviously still have it. Anyone doing any program could always have energized in the morning. I know everyone loves that. Um, you know, you'll, on May 2nd, there'll be a video uh, with Dini from Food and Nutrition Results at Beachbody explaining like, if you do size, like you may not need the hydrate, um, but if you're doing shift shop, you might. So kind of like explaining like how to infuse the performance line with the 2B mindset based on the workout program you're doing. And um, one more question, then I'll let you go on with your day. Uh, somebody asked about veggies. Uh, what about people that don't like veggies? How can we talk a bit about veggies in the program and how to help people who don't like veggies? Um, yeah, no one likes veggies from the start if you're eating, you know, chocolate and chips and soda every day. Like it's not going to obviously be as palatable or interesting to you. Um, but we actually all do like vegetables. Uh, we just don't realize it yet. Our bodies were designed to consume them and eat them. If you think 
think about like, I don't know if you're religious in any way, you don't have to be, but if you think about like just what is supplied for us in the land and what we're designed to take in and live off of, it is plants and, and vegetables as a mainstay. Um, it's okay if you don't like them today, um, but I will totally change your mindset about vegetables um, and show you amazing, delicious ways to eat them. I love delicious food. I love to eat a lot of food. No one realizes that until they eat with me and they're like, oh shoot, like <laughs> this girl can eat. Um, I love Thousand Island. I love ranch. I love things that taste like takeout Chinese food and, and, and pizza and everything else. Um, and, and you'll see like you, if you don't like veggies, cause you've been munching on like you know, slice celery or steamed broccoli every day next to, you know, a slice of pizza. Obviously, you're not that excited about it, but I am going to show you like so many fun recipes to incorporate them. And you'll see that vegetables are going to be an amazing way to feel full and satisfied and manipulate them with tomato sauce and cheese and whatever like it is that you love, like toasted sesame oil and, and whatever. I'll show you just like all these like fun ways to eat them so you get really full and actually you'll start seeing that you're, you'll lose more weight, you'll feel really good, your body will start working the way it was designed to with more energy, with better digestion, with better skin, all that stuff. Um, and, and you'll just look at it very differently. So you do not have to like all vegetables, you do not have to like, you know, mushrooms, you don't have to like peppers, you don't have to like cauliflower, it's like, it doesn't matter, but you should find one to like whether it's a baby carrot dipped into seven times the size guacamole or it's a cucumber with seven times the size spinach artichoke dip like you know you might not think you like veggies but at the end of the day if you are liking chips and salsa you're probably liking crunch and salsa and you kind of might as well slice a veggie and eat the salsa with it um and you'll see with the two mindset how you would do that and you would actually see tremendous results and and how to incorporate that in the way that like you actually enjoy. So it's okay if you don't like all veggies, it's okay if you feel like you don't like any, whatever it is, um, I will help you change your mindset on that. And you need to change your mindset on that um, in order to live and be well. Um, and also be a positive influence for your kids, your family members, friends, like it, it, it's, it's actually important that you find one that you enjoy um, eating. And I'll, and I'll help you with that for sure. For sure. So in a nutshell, get your friends and your family to do this with you. That's what we do as coaches. You guys don't forget, like if you know people who don't like, you know, who are struggling, be like, we're doing this program. Which like, is everyone. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, let's be real. I mean, obesity, it, it, this is an epidemic and, and you can say you hate your veggies. You can say you hate the scale, but we ought to think about like what else we really hate. Like we also really hate the idea of, of having diabetes. We hate the idea of being at risk of heart disease. We, we hate the idea of our friends and family not being able to walk up the stairs without huffing and puffing. Like, come on. Like, we, we got to change our mindset. We got to change our perspective. We, I mean, I always say we only get one body. You might as well make it rock. You might as well feel good in it. You might as well start to look at it as a treat and taking care of it and, and doing well with it. And that might not come naturally. That might not come day one. That might feel like a foreign concept. But with this program, you actually start to see that living well and treating your body well is a gift and it feels amazing and it feels super empowering and it gives you this immense form of control in a life that is so out of our control and that's one of the greatest things people say is like they just feel like they're they have control over their bodies um for the first time and there's you know we complain about the political climate and we don't like the ptas at our school and we don't like the people driving on the side of us a road but you actually really can take control over how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis how good you feel in the bedroom in in your clothes in your just day-to-day -day living and breathing practices you have so much control over and that's that's a big piece of the puzzle of just having a happy day and a ha happy and healthy life. And, and you have that control in your power. And I'm going to show you how to get it in such a positive, fulfilling and exciting way that you're never going to want to go back to. I know we're also excited. We had four girls in your, your test group from my team and I was talking to them in Mexico and they're just like, I'm never going back to the container. I'm never going back. I don't need to, you know, and a lot of really great results. And we're going to have them on our team call next week, you guys. So you will hear from them too. But um, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Really, really yes, cool. you guys are all going to rock it. Get excited. I heard a great podcast yesterday and, and he said, 
we need to change I got to to I get to. And I think this is just like the coolest line. Like, it's like, I got to get on the team call. It's like, I get to be on the team call. Like, I got to work out today. I get to work out today. I think like that is just like, it's like the easiest little change. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, I have to lose weight. It's like, I get to lose weight with the 2B mindset, you know? And it's a really fun, effective, and wonderful approach to it. So I think everyone just needs to, you know, just perk up and get excited because you might have been frustrated in the past because you didn't have with your weight or with anything because you didn't have all the tools to show you a better way. But with this program, like you're really never frustrated because you there's always something you can do to improve it and to get better and to get stronger and to keep seeing the results that you really, really, really want.